So, Father, we just thank you for this day, and we thank you for the sun, the moon, and the stars. We thank you even for the energy of the mother goddess, and we thank you for um, healing and um, peaceful transformations um, into the new that we're coming into. We thank you for the power that you've given us mentally, physically, and spiritually to obtain wealth. And we thank you for this time where we're discovering truths. Thank you for the spirit of truth taking us into the depths. Thank you even for developing your adepts. Thank you for um, new minds and new hearts coming even into this here um, teaching. Thank you for the power and the understanding that you give to each and every one of us concerning uh, the words and, and to know thyself, but never to be a, um, dependent on other people, but to depend on self and come together as groups congruently. Thank you for that mindset. Thank you that you did say that it would be a miss for us to depend on man. So thank you for balance in this season. We thank you for the Holy Spirit that lives and dwells with us and the increase that you're pouring into households even now. We just thank you for that increase, increase of mind, body. Thank you for the increase of stability. Thank you for the energy uh, that is coming in right now and giving us what we need to continue the work that you've given us to do. But thank you that we see what you've given us to do in this time, in this season. Thank you for healing of families, generations. Thank you that you show us where um, the blockages and the bondage is, that strongholds will be broken. Thank you for wisdom beyond our age, the wisdom of the ancients. Yes, thank you for that. Thank you for the power and the liberty to move forward. And we pray for uh, the collective. We pray for peace for those that have not had peace. We pay, pray for mental healing for those that are struggling. And in the name of Jesus, we pray for peaceful resolves concerning families um, and guidance. For you said that your word is a light unto our feet and a lamp unto our path. Let your light within us light up the way in a dark time that we'll be able to see successfully the way that we should go and that we will be our brothers and sisters keeper. And it is so, and it is so, amen. Mm -hmm. So I um, think that um, we were talking about the moon and the sun, right? Bring me back, cause I went into, um, something else just before we started recording. So um, the- We were talking about Saturn. Saturn. Okay, yes, yeah. Saturn is um, a um, important planet because it shapes our reality concerning breaking strongholds and bondage. You know, it's the karma planet and so is um, Pluto and Jupiter. So without knowing them and what they do, it's like a misfortune. And uh, for Saturn, it, it takes 29 years. So every 29 years you come into a return and that return does, you know, cause us to, um, it may cause us to um, act out or um, seem like we don't know what we're doing because there could be things that we hadn't discovered. Like people live a whole lifetime and don't understand that there were, it was something that they were to discover about themselves, such as um, we talked about victims to victory last week, right? And that was in Numbers 13. And um, I brought it back up again for today um, because I wanted to connect this with. Um, very well what we're talking about. Um, if there's, you know, karma, karma issues, and in most cases there are, then you will find it in the house of Saturn or where the house of Saturn um, uh, sits in your chart. And that is because, you know, the reaping and sowing is done there in that place. And so for our children, we want to teach them 
And, you know, why do we want to teach them? Because that's where you're changing the lineage because it's in um, your blood that come through your forefathers and into you. So the lack of success and the victim that we've been, so to speak, is our own fault because we didn't seek outside of the box, the comfort of who we, you know, have been or what we were taught by men and women to find the truth. And many of us have, you know, desired to know more truth, but we didn't search out because others said this is the way. But I mean, then you look at yourself and say, is this being lazy or just depending on people? And this is where our biggest problem with um, um, faltering comes because we can trust each other, but there's a balance. Let me go look that up. You know, don't let me depend on everybody for what I need. Now, I do believe that we, if we make a, a commitment, um, this is where uh, karma comes in and commitments mean that there is a tie spiritually, even though you as an individual don't recognize it, there's a tie there spiritually that you made because your words were put around it. And you vowed to someone that you would do something. This is not just about marriage, it's in professions and it's in um, any kind of um, thing where you create a, a agreement and it doesn't have to be written, you know? So in order to break it, that means that people have to come together and do that. You can't just take it upon yourself to break a verbal commitment nor a contractual agreement. So um, Numbers 13 um, says, and the Lord spoke to Moses saying, send thou the men out that they may search the land of Canaan which I give unto the children of Israel of every tribe uh, of his father, shall ye send a man, every one, a ruler among them. So here is a little bit how they set up, you know, the, the structures, because it was always a leader within. But the thing about that is, is that whenever the leader within um, is, is set, if no one is, um, watching out that they're making some of the right moves or like, you know, Moses had Aaron, a priest with him, there becomes a problem. And even with the priest, there can become a problem because it just depends on their integrity and um, them consistently, um, them consistently growing. So um, Moses sent them out to spy of the land. And we talked about last week that, you know, what is it going to profit me and you to spy out land when we don't even have a perception of what the land should look like? First, we got to get our perception right concerning what the land looks like. And that has a lot to do with whether or not our parents gave us an understanding of what the land should look like. Like if we're going to purchase something or something that is profitable, you know, and um, what is what it is and the people that dwell they're in, whether they be strong or weak. Uh, from our parents, and it does not always happen like that, we should understand our weaknesses and our strengths. Um, something happened in, the, in the, you know, the family dynamics that these were not the focus and material became the focus. And so this is where you know, I asked everybody to go back and look at yourself and know yourself, because how can you determine if a land is profitable if you don't know that your own land, your body, which is created out of the dust of the earth, which the Bible tells us that, and we know from the four elements, earth, wind, fire, and water, that we are created out of the elements of the earth. It's important for us to get that because these are secrets that um, unlock the nature of our being, and then it gives us the ability to create from out of who we are because the, the, the four elements is the way that creation is made. It don't, it don't take nothing away from God, the universe or power, it's just truth because in the heavens was created the sun and the moon. 
And after the sun and the moon was created, there was work, w water. I was telling my, um, my nephew yesterday, I said, um, he was telling me something and I agreed with him. And I said, well, you know, you, you have the ability to look at other planets forming right now. And you can see that water is a big capacity of where they are now. And it's in a starting point. If you look at Mars on YouTube, Mars looks a lot like the West Coast, desert looking. That means that the earth is forming, but air is there, there's a sky. So moving on within us, because we are created out of the elements and we are sun, you know, moon and an ascended sign. We are a spark of light from the sun. Right. OK, so this helps us to get a better understanding. My perception of who I am is what gets me the blessing, you know, and why I'm experiencing headaches right now. It ha you and I, let's just say that And when I say I am me, all of us, a lot of us um, it's because we are actually being transformed, my body and spirit. Without a doubt, this is not just uh, lightly to be said because the DNA is being changed. And you know that's why I came back here because this numbers 13 breaks down the information concerning families. Because out of each tribe, there was a, a, a member that was set as the leader, but the family was the tribe. You see, we don't have that strength anymore. So we have to teach this. So he goes on and I, I will give you guys what I wrote out. Um, do you know your strengths and weaknesses before pointing out others? Because this is a focus for society, you know? And what the land is that they dwell in. Do you know if the land that you were even born in is profitable? If it's good or bad, you know what I'm saying? If it gives off, you know, a good, um, a resonance for people. Uh, do you know anything about it? And a lot of people will go on to say, you know, what they know, but it's like, okay, find out more. And then how about the country you live in? Do you know anything about it? And you will find that a lot of people really, I did, did not, they don't know a lot about the United States. People that come from other countries more know more, know more about the United States than we do. And that's because they don't serve us that in school. That's why, you know, as you go on in my thoughts, um, I don't see really what school does for our kids. That's another social um, stronghold because everything that we learn in school, um, we really, you can teach it yourself to your kids. They're not going. They're not going to use a lot of it. I, I don't say that you shouldn't go to um, college or whatnot, but just think about what I'm saying. What you learn and how much of it that you use. Elementary, yeah. Okay. So, and I'm not right about everything, but I'm gonna tell you something. Some of these things block you and your kids from actually being free, because now you got the whole world in you, and now you got to get it out of you. So whether, it, do they live in tents or um, in strongholds? Were you born in a house <laughs> or, um, and, and are there bondage uh, that need to be transformed, broken or amended? And you know, uh, you meet a lot of people that actually don't know that they have um, problems in their household. Generally the oldest child knows. And that's not to say that the uh, middle and the youngest one, but you'll find that a lot of the young, older ones know, and some older ones will try to escape. They don't want to deal with it. Okay, so why bring this up? Um, I think it was Sunday. Nope, uh, either Wednesday or Thursday. Um, Alana was on and it keeps coming up. And I wanted to add to our uh, knowledge that in 
certain times in my life where the North Node in Gemini was present, um, I either had a person that was coming in into that node cycle that I lost as a close family member or afterwards, <clears throat> after we got into it. And um, I feel like it's profitable for us to point those things out. So you always need your natal chart. And the reason why is, is because history, it generally repeats itself. And uh, because it repeats itself, where you, you can break these cycles with um, and amend um, bondage or issues in, in you, your family, if you're called to, is when you see cycles coming around that's repeating. So here we get to look at, you know, what cycle we're in now. And um, from Gemini North Node, anyone that has that, what they will find is whatever cycles they saw 18 years ago, they're either repeating or it's changing. You getting a new start somewhere or you might be repeating, you know, a, a whole nother 18 years. Yeah, all right. So some of the things that I, I was talking about was not in depth, like I'm, I'm going into my chart, but um, Mercury, um, North Node, and Jupiter, um, or Sagittarius South Node. And um, Sagittarius is um, the old knowledge that I attained in the last 10 years. And what I would do with that knowledge now, in this here time of Mercury. And so the last time um, when uh, Jupiter was, or Sagittarius was um, prevalent, in the nodes was 2012, 13, right around that time. So I was in a lot of knowledge and learning, right? And so also um, putting together stuff that um, I think was before time, but I can use now, meaning um, technology wise. And so um, bringing it over into this time means that I'm putting action to it. And uh, a lot of that also has to do with teaching. So. And um, it says, um, further on, just looking at, um, um, I, I want to say 21st um, of Numbers 13, and what is the, what the land is, whether it be fat or lean, whether there be wood therein or not, and be ye of good courage and bring of the fruit of the land. So bringing the fruit of the land means that <clears throat> you're going to bring out of yourself what you put in and that's been transformed because what you may have um, used 18 years of your life prior, if you didn't see no produce in it, then you know that there's something else that you need to use. And that means that you have a knowledge, even a consciousness now that something needs to change. If you hadn't got it, well, welcome, you know, to listening in this here uh, class and on this, um, this forum because if nothing has changed and you keep repeating, there's something that you got to change. And that means it has to break, right? And with the North Node, uh, wherever it is in your chart, it, it, it gives a, a big message because it tells you um, about where that moon is, North Node, South Node. There are moons and that means that there are secrets that, that are hidden. Secrets even not just you know, from you, but even from your past uh, life and your family's past life, um, the past lives of your ancestors. And that's one of the things there. So um, what I have gotten um, out of this is that um, family members transcending, meaning, you know, leaving this earth, um, you know, they have a message during their life that they give you, whether it's good or, or bad. And when there's a chemistship or that connection, emotionally, mentally, or physically, whatever they did or did not do, there is um, a message when they're leaving the earth that you can find. A lot of times people won't find it because they will be focused on um, I think the physical loss and the spiritual um, attainment of what their presence brought and meant is so much more important. Um, 
that means in their negative and their positive, because this might be what you're learning out of it to deal with whatever you have going on in your life. So I was saying that, you know, um, Alana asked me how I was doing after um, my father's transitioning. And I told her, you know, how I felt about it, which was very positive. And um, I also added that when um, that time was going on, there was something, it's like I got a tap on my shoulder or something, and I could see that energy leave from my um, energy field, which was phenomenal because um, it added to me understanding the release from something and also the words that were oftentimes prophesied and I heard God say that I would be um, the person that changed um, things in the family. Now, I don't, I know, I know, you know, what needed to be changed, but I can tell you that it didn't look the same. My life did not even look the same as what I was to me walking out because of some of the issues, but I was able to pinpoint and see, you know, that, that spirit in my children and my um, siblings concerning the changes that we needed to make. And that means that a lot of times we look at people, but we don't see or know how to pinpoint what we see in them. For instance, one of my cousins was, um, she was on drugs all of her life. And there was a lady that came to work at a salon that I had um, about 12 years ago in Jacksonville. And um, the lady, well, you know, I dreamt about her and I dreamt about my cousin. Well, after that, you know, um, I went to work one day and then I looked at the lady and I saw my cousin. This is a familiar spirit. A lot of times people, they, they speak against them, but it's like, you can't live life without encountering people with familiar spirits. Um, it's a sign if you discern it. Um, that it could be a problem or that it's something that can change. A lot of people, you know, I've heard them say that, you know, when you're dealing with familiar spirits, I'm a familiar spirit to someone. I have a, a likeness like people. I mean, if they ran away from me, then what would I do? And what would they do? I mean, we're here to help each other. So here's, you know, familiar spirits. And I, I don't want to take away from anybody's teaching, but I do want to take away the power of doubt and your ability to help others become free. Because you see something negative about them. What about the negative in us? The, 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 the negative in us is still being worked out. And if someone has said when my father you know, if I had took the story differently, then that means that I would have not given um, credence to the fact that my father was on heroin the years that he was and that he changed his life. You know, I could have been stuck at that place. I also could have been stuck when I seen the pattern in my own son. I could have just said, forget it, do away with it. You know what I'm saying? I helped him, but he wasn't ready for the help. This is my son. So you got um, the genetics and all of this playing a part that come into um, the ancestry or through the line of ancestry. And what happens is, is that we play a part of changing this where a lot of people submit to what is given in the household when they're born and what is done. And sometimes it's positive and sometimes it's negative. You got to figure that out because, you know, there's a lot of people that are living in the mind of abuse, imprisonment, which we talked about the 12th house. So you'll find that um, in the 12th house. But when you go on and you're looking at the North Node, the North Node is telling you something about your family and the connections in your past because the moon has to do with mother. 
And, you know, when you look at the moon, the moon has to do with um, the mother and your father and your father having the male aspect. So we're looking at divine mother, divine feminine in your father and then divine feminine and divine uh, masculine in your mother. You know, because in order to really bring a merging of family dynamics and overcome, that means that um, that polarity within us has to become one. We have to become one where there is a wholeness in us. So the problem with we have with um, relationships, let's just say this number one, is the fact that a matter that we're still searching the way that our families did. Traditions are not the same anymore. We're even breaking traditions right now because we're going, we're in a new era. The Piscean age is um, leaving us. The fact of the matter, the structure is still there, is there. Like a lot of people, they don't want to be disciplined. So that's why we do not profit in life. We lose because we don't want to be disciplined. And when you have 29 year cycles of reaping and, and sowing, what are you sowing right now? That's enough to make you sit down and say, you know what? If I really believe that there is a God and there's a universe, let me start dealing um, and doing good because if not, then what I see about myself is, is that I really don't care about what I may receive because I think that I'm God. Before I become God, I got to realize the principles of the universe. And that has nothing to do with taking away God and Christ. Wait until we get to what was under the, under the moon, in the moon concerning these things. The moon is the place where everything is hidden until you begin to investigate. And a lot of people that are having headaches is because of the pressure um, that the energy is bringing and the breaking. What is the breaking? It's information coming forth. Like um, cancer is the moon. So cancer, you know, it gets a lot of pressure because of that. But now look at cancer being the very area that we're talking about family. And when someone leaves your life, even if they're not leaving permanently, the nurturing part of cancer is feeling wanting to make it better for whatever and they can't so you you know you're looking at balance you can't make it better when it's not your responsibility but the moon hides things we know that because even in our moon sign we've we've hidden things and felt like it belonged to us when other people probably need it so what does that have to do with the energy leaving because there's a freedom, especially when the cycle uh, is, is over. No, no one can tell you when it is, but this is an understanding of the possibilities of you paying attention more to yourself and understanding yourself more than you understand people. Because to thine own self be true. And yes, some people don't want to understand themselves. Leave them there. That's fine. Some of us are not going to get it. But some of us are here, just like they were. There was um, philosophers and you know people that taught things about truth and spirituality. Some of us are here to leave those those uh, stones um, as leg. I mean, uh, for legacies for people to grow that want to grow. And so we log this information and we pass it on. You know, uh, yes, some people do not care. And it's not about being cynical or saying, well, that's a shame. It's just how they're made. Because I personally don't always care to hear a mess. Because where's the production in it? And my way of, of thinking of production in, in, in someone else's is different. Because someone else thinks that if they have houses and cars, then they made it. But did the house and the cars and the money make you? I think it's a big, big um, controversy here because of what we've learned and seen. And um, 
to each his own. Because I feel like if I can edify people, um, that's my soul the, the desire. And if I can edify someone that wants to grow beyond their existence or um, their, yeah, their existence of who they are being placed in, what they possess materially, then um, God bless. And then it may be switched for others because some people are working to get material possessions because you know, that's what they feel their identity is, is shaped off of. But, you know, if, if, if we could get to a place where we understand you attained that now you uh, move forward, move further, if you feel to, you know, because the more you have, the more you want. Why? Because hidden, there is a greed that needs to be dealt with now. That's not for everyone, but there could be someone saying that, yeah, I'm just not happy with all of this here. So I'm still not happy. And that is because there's there's a, a, a in-depth need for you to fulfill something within your soul. So for some people, their identity is going to be cellular. And for some people, this is where they're going to find the truth that sets them free. The illusion is broken where freedom is. So the energy of a family member leaves you. You feel it, especially when you are connected spiritually. You and that individual. Um, you, you know, there's a kinship, a soul bond, um, or even a contract. If the contracts are and agreements are attached to something that you had to walk out that added to the redemption of that, that energy and that family, then it will be, um, over. Um, I believe that amendment means that there's a change, some type of adjustment. I don't believe that it's totally over, right? Which is not a bad thing because the adjustment could be the uphill swing of what you're going to go through now if you had went through um, many, many <coughs> hurdles and mountains and obstacles, right? I hope that's understandable. Because some people go through a lot of hurdles and obstacles. But now when you look at the hurdles and obstacles, here we are again. And I, I bring up Gemini North Node, where we are right now, and Jupiter, the Sagittarian South Node. These are moons. That means that you got a lot of moon energy and secrets are there that need to be revealed. And um, these nodes are karma no, uh, nodes. So you come back and you can look at what were some of the identifying moments 18 years ago for you? You know, even if you have, I think it's um, like Scorpio and Taurus, you can look at that. And your North Node would be in Taurus next. It, in a year and a half, when we come out of these nodes, that's where it's gonna be. And if it's there, what you'll find is, is that <clears throat> the North and the South Node are looking at Scorpio. And Scorpio is about um, digging deep, which is where we are right now, even in um, um, going into the next um, month which I think we are already into um, Scorpio season. So you get that um, mindset where you're like a detective and you got to start digging stuff up. And <laughs> it reminds me of, a, a, I'm looking at a dog that's just digging and it's like, remember what you're digging for, uh, purpose field. Don't just be digging to dig dirt up, you know. And then, you know, you're, if you have a mind to learn something, don't just be digging know what you're digging for so you come out with something because this is where we are so when you're in um the scorpio no it's gonna have to do with <laughs> legacies and 
in-depth issues around inheritances and family, you know what I'm saying? And um, actually money that you uh, share, um, it's gonna deal with death and rebirth. So <clears throat> even in the next North Node, um, South Node, there's gonna be, you know, some things that people are going to experience because this whole next decade, 10 years is gonna be a reshaping. So what happened when the North Node was in Taurus and Scorpio for those that have it? If you started now and you were able to look at your North Node and Scorpio and then you began to dig for information and remember information that is acquired there, then you can kind of like see some things that are going to play out for you, whether you're going to make a lot of money um, in that time, or whether you're going to have to um, tighten up on um, giving out, you know, how you give out and how you pay bills, that kind of thing. And especially because Scorpio is that, um, that house ruler about finances and taxes, yes. So you want to uh, get ahead of things there and um, you can look at it, but you can also know that that's an area that tells you a lot about your family past and finances. Um, so my grandmother was a Scorpio son and her son was in um, the, the 10th house, which is my house, my first house, right? But I also myself have a Scorpio moon and my mother does too. And what, what happened with them is, is that there were cycles of poverty. And see the Scorpio um, house has a lot to do with money. So did my mother and my grandmother make the right choices? And that's where, you know, the energy begins to speak to you and knowing the houses, but also the North knows when my um, father passed, there was a release of um, the divine uh, masculine energy that um, could have caused some volatile situations in me and in others concerning me because we attract the energy that's in our um, energy field. And that's like, you know, again, I say it's like the anointing that many people talk about. They say, oh, the anointing, it attracts negative and positive, but they haven't told us why. And this is why, because we have parts of our um, family, ancestry in us that is being released, released. And it's nothing that you can do to make it happen faster. You understand? I, I don't believe that because see, if you are here to do a work, it means that you have to work it out. Some of it is slower and some of it is, you know, some people might come in and it's 10 years that they got to do it. Maybe they came in because they had to complete a cycle of being abused children. You know, God bless them. And so they do that. And then they move into the next part of the cycle of their life. You see, the, the, the thing is, is that We don't want to look deep and accept that the journey is what makes us better. And, and that's where, you know, we come in and we're saying, yeah, I want to look at that. And I want to look at that only because I don't want to be a part of society that's saying that <laughs> my relationship to life was just no good because that means that I'm blocked and I have no ability to profit. That means that my father's life had no meaning to me. It doesn't matter what he did or didn't do. It was what he was supposed to do. This is how it played out. The choices that him and my mother made and someone before my mother and father, this is um, something that's playing on because I could look at the dynamics in my grandfather on both sides and the grandmothers, right? 
the sun and the moon, the nurturers and the uh, naturers. <laughs> and the nurturer and the nature in me has to meet in order for my wholeness. That means that I have to accept what is and what is not. Then I create that on the basis of who I am, which makes it important for, you know, us to identify with who we are. And before I can make decisions based on creating a legacy, I got to know what legacy I come from. So when, when, when that energy left, um, it was energy that did not profit me. And it was not my father, but it was parts of what he had a debt to, by the way. I'm working stuff out. I'm work God bless us. It ain't easy. But it's worth it. Because the more you know, even as we go into society, and we're looking at the collective aspect of things, at least we can learn that we can do better by people rather than just doing anything that we want to, right? This is what humility is about. It's like, what can I do to make a difference? Not what I can do to make me. You know, I'm going to be fine and, and I'm, you're going to shine as you make a difference. But it's like, make the difference in who you are by accepting where you came from. And it is good. That's hard, but it's the truth. You know why it's hard? Because it's what we've been taught. Oh, your mother is a whore. Your father's the, the biggest bastard. All of us are bastards <laughs> until we find God in us. What the heck? You know, your true mm -hmm. mother and father is, yeah, please. So, you know, identifying and finding out, you know, what your chart is saying, it's important for us to get a hold of that. And also, so that we can know ourselves in how do you start the journey? Accept who you are and love who you are, no matter what. You know, if you were a drug addict or a hooker on, don't be ashamed of who you are because it's, it's part of the greatness that is um, coming up inside of you. Forgive yourself and forgive your past. Thank God that you had the opportunity to do something to change um, the families. Even if you don't know what it is, when you settle down, what happens is, is that the fact that it matter that you submit to it, like, listen, let's, let's go here. I, you know, sometimes it's not even easy to be able to teach something that a lot of people have not um, heard before, but baby, <laughs> it makes sense to me, you know? And if it makes sense to me, then, hey, it might make sense to some others out there that's in, you know, the flow of where we're going in truth, because that traditional stuff is broken. That is a bondage keeper. Traditions. OK, Thanksgiving working for you this year. What you going to do, eat all the food? What, what else? And who gave you Thanksgiving tradition anyway? Mm -hmm. Please, can I get my own traditions? How about I create some? Why? Because why am I upholding traditions that other people gave me that have nothing to do with who I am? It don't speak to me, it don't make me great. You know, in the same reason why we want so much and are never satisfied. And then we, you know what? We lose, it seems. Some people can't make it back on this side of heaven because mentally they're so broken about what they don't have that equates to what society said. What if God was all that you were supposed to have? That wouldn't be enough. See, this is where you begin to assess your value of who you are. Because out of nothing comes something. You can't manifest anything until you are in the darkness. It's the repeat of the seed. So where darkness leaves your life, then life, light can shine in that area. Maybe your father and your mother, they give you a sign that you can actually shine when you overcome something that they had bound within their own lives. I hope that makes sense. 
Yes. And I want to say this here. I told my um, daughter-in-law, I said, oh, I'm, no, no, I'm changing. I said, I, you know, I'm free. I said, I don't know if I want to get a house. I could just travel the world after this here disease is over. I don't have no bondage or no ties to anything. I can take work wherever I go. And, and sometimes people don't even see the freedom in um, the times that have come up in their life. They just want to stay with the strongholds. Mm -hmm. Please understand what I'm saying because yes our lives are not the same and we are not the same but you know you you give people thoughts to make them think now can they revelate and and give me back thoughts because what your truth is will not be your truth 10 years from now I guarantee you your truth is based off of what you've been seeing and what you've been told and what you're living. And that's fine because see, you're learning, but then is the learning profitable? Are you okay with what you're learning? Or do you feel like you're, you know, you don't like it. I mean, we all come in a place where it's painful to release stuff because it's who we've been. And we feel like, oh, we're not going to, oh, I can't get this garbage back. Oh my God, if I let this garbage go, what am I going to do? Well, if I realize it is garbage, then I'm good. But then there is, you know, there's a, a connotation of what garbage is. Everything that we have taken in mentally, physically, and spiritually could be garbage because it may not be conducive to our growth. That means that what? We're, we're having to undo Go into the moon and find out what, what it is. Why, why did I get here? You understand? You know, what part of family brought me here? So, in Luke 23 and 46, this is what Jesus is crying out with a loud voice. And he says, Father, into your hands, I commit my spirit. You know, I surrender. And having said this, he breathed his last. Now, however we see it, some people think that he died and then he ascended, right? But let's just put our understanding on it, the moon and the sun and the ascension. Because if he released anything and he actually came back up and he was seen, that means that he ascended, right? Here's your ascending sign. And your ascending sign is showing you something about yourself. And so then it reads also, when Jesus had cried with a voice, this is another King, King James, I believe, version. He said, Father, into your hands, I commend my spirit. And having said this, he gave up the ghost. Now, differently, um, some people, they speak of spirit and ghost, you know, however you will see it. But my thing is, when you are crossing or meeting with a crossroad in your life, even as I brought up, you know, um, at the 18 years, there was someone that passed that was significant in my life. It may not be the same for others, but you'll be able to pinpoint that there are some um, areas that you need to focus on again, right? And so giving up the ghost, when spirit said, you see how that energy left you? It was energy that I had to walk through life in and experience that was a release of a ghost from the past. Some people would call it familiar spirits because it's familiar. Um, but the point is, is that it was released and there is a part of my life that I can live differently now. Yes, if you guys understand, because it released some um, karmic issues that I came here to fulfill. I don't think that I'm completely done, but there is a, a, a payout, the redemption 
Somebody look up a scripture with redemption because see, a lot of people don't understand what redemption is. It's not about money. You cannot pay your way out of problems. I do like um, for people to give donations because we help others that are in need, but money cannot pay you out of a karmic debt. So if anybody has that, let me know. And then we are gonna wrap this up. redemption i have romans um chapter 3 verse 24 it says being justified freely by his grace through the redemption redemption that is jesus christ that is christ jesus and that's the king james version okay so redemption has to do with paying a debt mm-hmm all right. And that redemption means that you can't fasten it up. You can't pay your way out. You can't do anything but learn how to grow with it. Mm, embrace it and love it. Because it's, it's part of who you are. You're working out an old cycle or an old part of you, which has to do with mother or dad. Because you are a mother and dad duplicated with your own personality, but you got them, right? Right. It's not parts of, of them that you just say you don't want or you hated that about them. It's simply what you're working out because actually they mirror to you what that is. They shadow to you what that is. So say, for instance, there's a, a young man that doesn't like his mother. He'll find it's in his moon or his mm -hmm. father. He will find it. Mm -hmm. And it's not just that you stay right there not liking it. You, you, you don't like it. You judge them on that thing and don't even realize unconsciously that you are that. You see, I could have said <laughs> that I hated my dad or I didn't like him or whatever, but I embraced all of the good because I seen, <clears throat> you know, areas of my life and not to mention my, my, my sons that um, were a part of that DNA, the redemption, the redemption. What is the, you know, what, where is the redemption in all of this for me? But if I'm not taught where to find it and, you know, we're remembering because these are things that were taken from us, but it's profitable for us to know. And some people will say, well, you know, I'm, um, I'm, um, I'm, um, um, they will say that I, you know, I was adopted or I didn't know my parents or, you know, they, and it, it's, it's still guidance. Spirit will guide us to those truths. And this is the thing that we need to, um, understand. Um, some people would be led to, uh, discover, their ancestry, and maybe some will not, but the truth that sets us free has a lot to do with um, ancestry. That's why a lot of us want to go back and we feel like, um, you know, we want to discover things about antiquity. It's okay, because when you do and you really put your mind to it, you're not just that puppy that's digging up dirt, but you got a purpose to it now. Because then you're going to find out that your affirmation of who you are has to do with a lot of people that did great things. But because it's in the moon and no one's talking about it, it's been covered up. So the polarities in your father and your mother, you know, it's not just that the sun is shining or that you know, even Jesus was saying that it's the father in me or that we discovered that in Malachi three and four or four and four, four and two, the four chapter two, three, that the son will bring healing with wing in its wings will give you healing through its wings. It's spelled S-U-N, not S-O-N. And the sun will rise with healing in its wings. So the healing that we seek is in understanding the sun. Ra, 
the mm-hmm. father. Mother has a discovery as well. And what that means is mother and father, when we discover these things and we're working on it, consciousness begins to evolve into the polarity, which is much like, um, no, it's, it is the mercury energy. And so it brings the polarities together and, and the wholeness is there. It don't just happen. You got to work on it. You got to work on it. How do I attain wholeness? But that's where it is in the, in, in the mercury energy. So mercury is communication, but the underlying um, understanding is unity, bringing the polarities together. They're not separated, sun, moon. They come together. In that mist, it is our personality wrapped up, which is the ascension. This is it. So all of the issues that we had were to lead us into our redemption, embracing them. This is where the veil is torn. Everybody can't see it because the hallucinations fall away. And that is because consciously you're working towards something you're led towards, or you feel that you need to be working on this different from others. Everybody's not gonna want this kind of information, but where there is freedom, that's where liberty is. And whom the sun is set free, you see? It's free indeed. We are the sun. Repeat. I said, so we are the sun and we set ourselves free. Yeah, yep. Yep. Amen. So that's where we're gonna stop with that. And um, I'm just going to let everybody know that we can be reached at ifwbuilders at gmail.com or <clears throat> uh, become a part of our um, forum at www.wealthyliving.org because we got a networking event coming up next month on the 16th. It's a Saturday.